Oh, jeez. That is not good. That's not going to be good for pavers. We need to get this figured out. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the vlog. This week we're gonna start on our paver patio. We're gonna be slinging slabs. We're gonna be dealing with some unfortunate issues along the way. Follow us along as we handle it. Make sure you hit subscribe, stay tuned. Okay, so here's the plan. We're gonna start with the accent strip closest to the house so that we can work our way out of that corner. Setting our screed pipe elevation will be a breeze because all of the elevations at each door are the same. We're gonna work our screed bed in sections so we can do that, lay the pavers, move on, screed some more. With any luck, we'll have this whole section done by the end of the video. All right, we're getting ready to turn the corner here. We're basically gonna do kind of like a, uh, what would you call that, Tony? A little subway switch. This looks like it could be like your album cover. So we're gonna basket weave this intersection where it turns against the house. I think it's gonna be real nice. We just wanna set up our string line so we can go nice and straight. And we're checking it off the house and off of the pavers that we already laid. Make sure that we're nice and square. Measurement's the same, we're good to go. We like to use that collapsible square because it helps us keep it square and it folds up so it can really fit in the trailer real nice and inconspicuous. And if you really like it, check out the link below, our Amazon store. I'll get like six cents. <laughs> they go down fast. Oh yeah. And you guys touch every one of them. Yep. Every About one. three, four so times. We walk yep. on them, we'll remember it forever. Yep. Yep. Here is where things start to get a little bit more complicated. We do it like this, 97 by 97. I'm saying, if, if you do it and say, I'm saying, if, if you do it and say we put a full down, then you have to snap your line and then measure over and measure over. Yeah. Do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Well, whatever we decide, we gotta commit to, to the whole thing. I'd say we just start at this corner, we're on a string line, 45 degrees. We'll just go. Yeah. All right, so here's the plan. We're getting started on our field inlay and we have two choices. We could either figure it out exactly right now and lay that out as we go, or we can lay all of our field pavers, snap lines, and cut it in later. I think that's gonna be easier, but let's see. We just set our screed pole even with our screed bed we did previously get a laser measurement, and now we're gonna pitch two inches to that far corner. Once we get that screed bed set, we can start laying the slabs. Getting our slabs down here, and you saw we just did a string line coming 45 degrees off the corner. Started off of that, now we're working in both directions. What we wanna make sure of is that we're splitting directly in half at each row so that our pattern stays dead on. Each time we go to a new row, we're just checking with a tape measure. Looking pretty good, what do you think? It looks great. Awesome. One of the big problems that we have to contend with here is the uncompacted backfill around the pool. They just took all of the excavated dirt, put it back into the backfill zone. Not a problem for the pool company. They're gonna do a concrete pool deck, which is gonna sit on top of the concrete piers around the pool. The pool deck's gonna be fine, even if the dirt underneath of that starts to sink and fill in all those void spaces. But what'll happen at the edge of the concrete, our base will start to migrate down towards those voids and we're gonna have a lot of sinkage on our pavers. We don't want that. We're gonna get the call back, not the pool company, even though they did the backfill. So all we're gonna do is use the power of some agua, some water, some H2O. It's gonna eliminate all the void space there and we wanna just keep hitting this with water until it's not moving anymore because we don't wanna have our pavers sink.
We'll check back in on our progress in a little bit. We've got almost all of our field pavers here laid. So now what we're doing is just making rough cuts. We have a double Mika border going here, which is about nine inches. So we'll measure off of this nine inches, snap a line, and then we'll cut straight through it with the demo saw. So these don't have to be exact, but uh, whenever possible, we like to cut in place. Makes for a much smoother finish. So we're starting to cut in the inlay now. It's gonna be roughly eight feet by eight feet. You're probably wondering why didn't we just space these as we went lay in the inlay? We could have done it that way. It would have made the layout a little bit harder and we still would have had to cut half pieces of Blue Grande if we put the inlay as we went. Although this is a ton of cuts, I think it's gonna make for a nicer finished product. Now wait till you see how the fire pit lines up with our inlay, make it look perfectly symmetrical. When the boss says jump, we just say how high. All right, we've got a majority of these pavers down, a few more cuts, we're getting in the Mika border. This is where it gets important with the layout, and this is why we decided to put the Blue Grandes down first, then pick exactly where we wanted to stagger that inlay so that we could put our fire pit directly inside one of these diamonds. We got a string line running across, we made some marks. That way we can find exact center. Our fire pit's gonna be 48 by 48, so we can just pull off of this. 24. Damn, dude. What? That's gonna look dope. The other things that were really nice about this layout, once we laid this, we decided we could go off of this corner. We could get close enough to this pipe where we could center the fire pit within this diamond. This line dying directly into this corner. And we've got this one dying directly into this corner. It's those little things that all add up and make for a dynamite layout. So I think we're on a good track here. We'll start cutting this out and we should have this area buttoned up pretty soon. Let's check in on our aqua packing, see how we made out. This is another area and we just hit this for the first time and you can see we hit that with the hose and we shoved it all the way down. Whoa, geez. <laughs> all right. You can see it created these little sinkholes here and what's happening is all the plumbing is running down along the footing. So that's an area where we really need to make sure that all the void space is gone. I can push this down. <laughs> We'll hit this one or two more times. We should have all of the void space taken care of and we should be good to go lay pavers here and not have any sinkage down the line. I'm aqua packing. <laughs> Let's check in on the rest of the patio. It's just about wrapped up. You can see how perfectly this fire pit lined up within our diamond. We have the same exact cut on both sides. It just is one of those little things that's gonna make a huge difference in the overall layout. And check it out, it's really starting to come together here. This is gonna be probably the sickest part of this whole backyard, even though we're doing this insane addition, the pool, the patio. This is gonna be so sweet. We're gonna cover it in the next video. 
bar top area here. We're gonna have a Dornstone decorators on top. We're gonna have a little banquet back by the window there. It's gonna be freaking awesome. Stools on both sides. But you're gonna have to wait for the next vlog to see us build this whole area. So make sure you hit subscribe, stay tuned, and until next time, this is Premier Outdoor Living.